Alex Rhoda was a 15-year-old boy and like many, he searched for love on the internet. But sometimes online connections can turn into your worst nightmare. Alex's boyfriend was ashamed and scared the truth would come out. So he killed Alex. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. This is the murder of Alex Rhoda. Wanna know what happened? Let's get started. Alex Rhoda was a 15-year-old boy from Pickmere, Nutsford. He lived on Holly Grove. Alex, a student at Holmes Chep High School, was popular, sociable, and very secure of himself. He was openly gay. His parents described him as wonderful, gentle, loving, kind, caring, respectful, and he loved life. In late October 2019, Alex initiated contact with an 18-year-old boy. Matthew Manson on Facebook. They knew of each other from Holmes Chapel High School. Matthew was a quiet individual. He lived with his affluential family on a farm near Nutsford. His family was extremely religious. He was in college. He was an agricultural engineering student. His father was a farmer. The conversations initially started as brief and polite with them asking each other how their day was, but soon it turned more intimate. They exchanged pictures on Snapchat. Matthew sent an explicit picture of his penis to 15-year-old Alex. Their relationship turned sexual. The explicit picture Matthew sent Alex would be the center of a storm that would end up in death. According to Alex's friend, Alex kept talking about his new relationship. He seemed more confident and he seemed to be glowing at school. But still, the relationship was a secret and there was a good reason. Matthew had a girlfriend, Caitlin Lancashire. And also, Matthew didn't want his family and friends to know he was gay or bisexual. They wouldn't accept it. This according to Alex. Early November, Alex started following Matthew on Instagram. And that's where he found out about Caitlin. And Alex was upset. On November 3rd, Alex texted Caitlin. Getting in touch with Caitlin made Alex and Matthew's secret relationship tense and dangerous. Alex told Matthew he had texted Caitlin. Matthew didn't want the relationship to become public because Alex was a minor and he was also a boy. So Alex became a threat. And later that day, Matthew added Alex as a payee to his bank account and transferred 50 pounds to keep him quiet. And Alex started blackmailing Matthew. He told Matthew he still had the penis picture Matthew had sent him when he was drunk and that he would post it online. Matthew denied it, and Alex replied. Matthew, at this time, had been dumped by his girlfriend. On November 9th, despite the tension between the two of them, they had a sexual encounter and Matthew paid Alex to keep him quiet. Alex had a group of girlfriends and he told one of his friends about what was happening and they were concerned. One of his friends warned him of what he was doing. Alice 
Jesus kept asking Matthew for money. Matthew asked friends and family to borrow money from them. He told Alex he couldn't afford it, but still, he paid him. A few days before the murder, Alex's mother encountered Matthew at her home. She felt weird about that boy. She felt a weird energy coming from him. Text messages indicated she had actually interrupted Matthew and Alex having sex. That day, Matthew transferred 100 pounds, and he also already had made plans for Alex. On December 12, 2019, Alex was last seen leaving his house at 5 p.m. He was supposed to go meet up with Matt. A friend stated he was happy with going out with Matthew, but after a FaceTime conversation, they were concerned. Alex called one of them and told them, How weird is this? What's weird? This guy I'm meeting wants to take me to a special secret place in a forest. He said he didn't want to go. He was confused. But still, he agreed to go because he needed the money. And Alex should have followed his instincts and his friend's advice. He sent a message to a friend, a snapshot picture inside Matthew's car and a small heart emoji. That was the last time anyone talked to him or saw him. Alex never came home. His mother tried to call them. She called his friends. Alex's family and friends were searching for him. When Alex's mother learned Alex was meeting Matthew, she contacted him. And then she reported Alex missing. Alex's lifeless body was discovered partially naked the next morning by garbage collectors. The question was, who had killed Alex Rhoda? Someone saw a car parked on the track. They took a picture and reported to the police. At midnight, the Sheriff Police texted Matthew. On December 13, Matthew Mason was stopped by the police in Staffordshire and he was arrested. Matthew had dried blood on his hands. He had a bin bag in the trunk of the car with a blood-stained wrench and also Alex's jacket in it. Matthew Mason was charged with the murder of Alex Rhoda. During investigations, authorities found Matthew's internet searches. What could happen if you kicked someone down the stairs? Everyday poison. The mysteries of Cheshire unsolved deaths of missing people. Matthew said he did it because he was suicidal. Matthew admitted having sex with Alex and he thought it was wrong. Matthew denied the charge of murder. He claimed he killed Alex in self-defense or loss of control. According to Matthew, on the evening of December 12, Matthew picked up Alex from his home. He drove him to a remote area. He told Alex he couldn't afford giving him more money, and he took a wrench to scare Alex. When they were in the woods, Alex threatened Matthew that he would ruin his life financially and socially. Alex pushed him to the floor, grabbed the wrench, and hit Matthew. He took the wrench away from Alex and hit him twice. However, evidence showed that Alex had actually been hit more than 15 times in the head and body. And this seemed like Matthew was trying to put the blame on Alex for what had happened. During trial, the prosecutors believed Matthew intended to kill Alex. He made it seem like the two of them would be having sex, so he chose a secluded area to kill Alex. They believe Matthew was concerned his relationship would become public and he was worried because Alex was a minor. Following the attack, Alex was left to die alone. Matthew discovered Alex's phone on the passenger seat and got rid of it. They never found it. Then Matthew tried to cover his tracks and set up on an alibi. Matthew had a drink with friends in the Red Lion pub in Pigmere and the Golden Pheasant pub in Plumley. He returned to the woods, dragged Alex's body to the side of the car. He tried to put the body inside the car, but he couldn't do it. So he drove away. 
At the end, Matthew Mason was found guilty of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum sentence of 28 years, which was later reduced to 26.